Hey hey, so this is a, another little video where I'm going to try to explain, perhaps, um, where I've gotten to with the art direction of this game in progress. So, this is what it looks like at the moment, I'll play it, hopefully it will work. Um, so still flat shaded, still no textures, um, still all vertex colours, and the rest of it is just done with the shader. Um, some screen space, ambient occlusion, and shadows and whatnot. So, you can see, the recording's going a bit slowly, that if I hold still, you might actually see it. I put some cloud shadows in, so the lighting will change slowly. Anyway, so I'll just explain how I get assets into the game at the moment, which I'm pretty happy with how that's working out. Oh, I'll, I'll do one thing. I've, um, okay, so I'll, I'll stop that. <coughs> so it's all made in 3D Studio Max. And you will notice, say for example, this tree. It's all pretty low res, that's about uh, 2000 verts. And that's where all the kind of faceted shading bits are coming from. The way I make an asset is, I'll make one now quickly for you, let's just put a teapot in the game, easy peasy. So I'll grab a teapot, drag it out there, hello teapot, and what I'm doing is I'm baking the ambient occlusion, well at least not all of it, some of it, into um, the verts, so that's got plenty of vertices, let's just put it the right way around so we can see it properly. Okay, let's block this area off with the teapot. Okay, so I'll grab the teapot, go do it like that, and what I do first is I put an uh, underpaint on it. So here's the the teapot's stack, put a vertex paint modifier on it. See what it looks like with the vertex painting, at the moment it's all white. Let's just paint the entire teapot a nice blue colour. Okay, now the teapot is blue. Wow. Okay. Now what you do, uh, 3D Studio Max actually has some pretty decent vertex painting tools. So what I'll do now is I go to bum be bum be bum. How do I do this again? That's right. Assign vertex colors. And with the assigned vertex colors, I will um, bake some radiosity into it. So I've just got a simple skylight setup in 3D Studio Max. Reset my simulation, start it again, and now what I can do is, it's a very quick, simple pass. Um, let's see if it worked. There we go. So now I've assigned a very simple ambient occlusion, or more like a skylight baked GI pass on it. It's actually just the lighting information, so if we get that teapot by itself, you'll see that it's darker on the bottom, which was in the shadow. It's pretty subtle, but it also adds kind of bit of detail to all the nooks and crannies and stuff when you have more um, things like I do on the tree. And then what you do, you'll notice that that's put a vertex paint modifier on top of the original colour one that's painted over it. But it's painted over it with black and white, so what you can do is you can get that modifier and put it in multiply mode. And now you'll see toggling, toggling on and off, it just added a bit of lighting information. Bake straight into the vertices there. Easy peasy. You can also try, <coughs> pardon me, overlay. And that's a bit more, kind of gives a bit more pop. And that looks nice, look at that. So now that that's in there, might as well just we'll just export that straight to the scene as a tester. Teapot. Oh, one other thing I do, I'll just show you this as well. Um, so you see in my, on my tree, under the user defined properties, I've got all these tags. And this, as soon as it comes into Unity, it applies things like puts it in the ground layer, adds a mesh collider, puts the material on it, and other things that I need for the game logic. If I put this on the teapot, it will set it up automatically the way I want it to. So now I've just done that. Now I will export it again. Where did the first one go? Did I save it? No, I mustn't have saved. Teapot. Okay, so now the teapot's in there. Go back to the game, 
and where'd it go? Do, 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 my import folder. Here we go. Models, environment, teapot. Drag it into the scene, pop, and you'll see there it is straight away. Now, I don't need to do anything more to that teapot. If I select it, you'll notice that. Let's see if I can show it here. It automatically put a mesh render on it. It put um, the scripts I need for my game. It put the material I want, the vertex color script. And it put it in the right layer, which you can't see there because it's out of the zone. So now if I go into the game, it will react properly with everything I need it to. <laughs> Hopefully. And you'll see it's got the lighting and shading on it. And that has saved me so much time because I'm doing some other um, contract projects on the side where I'm doing a bit of texturing. Texturing takes so long, it's like 80% of the work I have to do. And just to not have to texture is so nice. So look, I'm walking on a teapot. No need to worry about anything, it just works. Yeah, so that's my asset pipeline. It's, I think it's going to save me weeks and weeks of work over the life of this project. And I think it looks good enough. Like, textures obviously look amazing, and it would look great to have some normal maps in there. But it's a style that I can ship, basically. It looks nice enough for me. I'm, st I'm sure I'm going to tweak it a lot more before it's finished. But it's something that's doable in the time I have and the budget I have. So that's all. Hopefully I'll have more to show next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, one more thing. Wait, one more thing. I've got some new... I want to show you this little secret area here. If I make the jump, yeah, so now I've just got a thing here, see it rotates around, and there's a cave you can go into over here. So this is the indoor area. Still nothing in it. But yeah. Okay, bye-bye.